Hi folks, in this video I am going to discuss this critical error that says your start menu isn't working. We'll try to fix it the next time you sign in. Now if you're like me, clicking on sign out now has not helped. And you know, you reboot or whatever, and every time you click on your start button, it, the same thing pops up. There are several uh, possible fixes to this. And uh, the way this video ended up working out is... Um, the fix that I explained uh, when I was recording earlier about creating a new administrator user account, I have found that if I log into that account, my start button is working. Uh, that's the only good news that I have. Um, that means that I need to move my documents and my preferences, etc., from my old account into the new account. Uh, and, but there are several other things that are much easier that have worked for other people, um, which I will uh, also explain because I've recorded earlier. I'll just tag them on to the end of this. But um, the final solution for me was creating a new user and using the new user account. Just to give you a quick idea about how you could move files from one account to the other, uh, let's just hold down the Windows key and press R on your keyboard and let's type in uh, Explorer, hit enter and we'll get our file explorer coming up here. Okay, so what you're wanting to look for, you know, down along the left, you're going to go to, uh, you know, this PC. Oh, I don't have much space left. Uh, double click on drive C. Usually that's your system drive, right? Uh, it may be different for you. So double click on your system drive. You're going to go to the users tab. And owner was my original um, user account, right? New admin is the new account that I made. That you'll see how to do so later in the video. You double click on that and I'm currently logged in as owner. I want permission to get in here, so I'm going to click on continue. That lets me in there. So what I can do is go into owner, for example, and double click on documents. This is everything in my documents folder. You click on any one item and go control A, then all of your things will be selected. Then you can go, you can either copy or uh, actually cut and paste, right? So if you cut, it'll move it. If you copy, it'll just make a copy. So, you know, if your drive is as full as mine, you're going to want to cut. So you're going to go Control X, right? Which will put it in cut mode to move. Then go into, uh, you know, back to users, into the new account, into documents. And then you can go Control V or you can right click and say paste. And that will move everything from documents over. And you can do the same thing with the other folders. You know, you've got favorites and music and pictures, etc. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because it'll be a long process. Uh, that's just a very quick idea about how to move things over your basic stuff anyway. Um, if you find that your solution is similar to what I've had to do now, I will show you all the other ways that you can fix this issue. Hopefully, uh, one will work for you. Uh, the one I just learned of and I'm hoping will help because nothing else so far has is uninstalling Dropbox. So if you're running Dropbox like I am down here, right? Um, that may be your whole issue. Many, many people have said that Dropbox, uh, for some reason, it's dumping on Microsoft in this way. So uh, you can try holding down your Windows key and tapping the X to get this menu here. Otherwise, uh, if that doesn't work, try right-clicking on your Start button. You'll get the same menu. All right. At the top, it says Programs and Features. You want to click on there, and you can drag this critical error message down. Drag it by the title bar. The, the, you can actually drag it by the words critical error. It's a good target for you. And let's just go in and let's 
find Dropbox. Here's Dropbox. Click on Dropbox to select it. Click on Uninstall and uh, Uninstall. Um, reportedly, uh, if this works, you can then reinstall Dropbox and everything should be uh, fine. So that's cool because I do use Dropbox uh, fairly regularly. Now, close that, close that. Let's just see if it actually... No, it's still getting that error. But what we'll do is restart the computer. Uh, hopefully that fix will have worked. And I've already done a video about the other uh, possible fixes, which I'll take on to the end of this one. So there are several things that you can try. Now, the easiest one to do, uh, the sort of fastest result without doing anything weird to your system, is to reboot into safe mode and then just reboot it back into normal mode. And for some people, that works. In fact, uh, that works for several different kinds of errors. I found that that works for, it has worked even back into XP days um, with certain kinds of system instability. So it's always a good idea to try if you're having some kind of an issue. Now, of course, your, state, your start button's not working, so you're a bit limited in how you can get to things. So to boot into safe mode, hold down your Windows key and press the Windows key on your keyboard and press R. Let's tap the R. And what you want to do is type in this word here, msconfig, M-S-C-O-N-F-I-G. Okay. Click on OK, and you'll see that it pops up in the middle of your screen, system configuration. Now the critical error window will be in your way, so you can grab the title bar, right, just to the right of, or even the, on the word critical error, and just drag that down to the bottom of the screen and uh, get it out of the way. All right. So you're in your system configuration window up here. Click on the boot tab. Click on safe boot so that it's checked to keep it on minimal. And basically click on OK. All right. And it will offer to restart, give you the option to exit without restart, but restarting is the whole point. Click on restart, you'll get into safe mode. Now, <clears throat> once you're in safe mode, if you just restart uh, the normal way, um, it's just going to keep going into safe mode. So you have to train it to go back into normal mode. So let's exit this, and it's just the same thing all over, but in the reverse check. So hold down the Windows key, tap the R, make sure MS config is in the open line, click on OK. Now you're doing this in safe mode, right? You're going to click on boot, you're going to uncheck safe boot here you can click OK and you're going to click on restart all right now um, that has worked for many people it did not work for me so I still get the critical error after doing that another thing that you can try it could be that your antivirus is causing issues right so uh, I find that I can still right click on my start button and get the system menu so if you can still do that click on programs and features all right and you'll get a list of everything that's installed i have for example malware bytes anti malware installed i could click on uninstall i'm not going to try that right now there's something else that uh, may work but if you're down to the point where you have to try uninstalling your antivirus that's how you would do it your uninstall will run and then i would suggest rebooting your computer and seeing uh, if your start button is working without your antivirus. So to reboot your computer, um, most computers you can just tap your power key, right? And it'll shut down and then you can turn it, just turn it back on. Uh, otherwise, again, if your right click is working on the start button, you can right click, go to shut down or sign out and click on restart or shut down, whichever you prefer. Of course, if you shut down, you'll have to hit your power button to bring it back up and see if it's now working. <clears throat> so that is one other possibility that may help you. Now another possibility is you may just need to update your Windows 10 to the latest version of Windows 10. They've had various versions come out and once again click on your Windows key 
type R. This time we don't do msconfig. We're going to type in ms dash settings and then a colon. If you don't put the colon, it won't work. Click on OK and you'll get the settings dialog that comes up. You want to go into update and security. Make sure that you're on the Windows Update uh, tab on the left and you can click on check for updates. And it will see if there is a new version of Windows for you to grab. If you want to check, see mine's totally up to date, even if it's not a new version of Windows, any updates may help. So I would just get any updates that are possible and then reboot and see. Um, but to see if you have the latest version as of this video when it was created, you can click on system. You know, I got to I got from update and security, right? I clicked on the little back button in the upper left hand corner, and we get back to the main level. Click on system. If you scroll down on the left and choose the about tab, uh, 1511 is the current version as of the recording of this video. So again, this won't help me, but it may help you. If you have a lower version than 1511, then going into update and security and checking for updates may be exactly what you need. So that has helped many people. Now the final possible solution that I'm aware of uh, that I haven't tried and think might be a fairly easy fix, let's close this off here, is creating a new user account um, and making it an administrator. And simply doing that apparently uh, can help. Okay. So uh, to do that, we want, uh, let's see if we can do it here. So if you right click on your start button, you can choose on, choose command prompt admin. Okay. And it'll ask, are you sure this is what you want to do? And you can click on yes. Okay. And this gives you an administrator level command prompt. Now, if uh, right clicking on your start button doesn't work, try holding down the Windows key and pressing the X. All right, and that will give you uh, possibly that same menu that uh, that you get when you right click on the start button. Okay, and then you can choose the command prompt admin from there. So once we are here, we want to create the new user. So to do that, we're going to type in net user and then a forward slash which is the one under your question mark and we're going to click on add and then uh, you want a new username right so I'm just going to call it new admin in this case and I'll give it a really hyper secure password of one two three four five six okay and press enter now we have a new user called new admin with password one through six there but the user is not yet a or an administrator okay so now we want to go net local group all one word okay and then type in administrators and then we put the uh, username new admin whatever your username was of course you put in there and then forward slash add now that new user is an administrator okay so in theory if I now log out and well I would restart right so if I now restart the computer I may find that my account now has a working start button. Okay. But and that's what many people have found. But what you may find is that your start button still does not work, but that that new administrator start button works. So now that new account has a working start button. So what you may ultimately have to do is go in and move all your files over to that new administrator account that you've created and just set up your preferences and everything and then once you've cleaned it out you can just delete your old account that process is outside the scope of this video but 
it's a possibility it may be your uh, sort of last ditch effort in terms of getting things up and running again. Okay, so um, I am going to restart. Of course, that is going to stop the recording of this video. So I'm going to sign off now and say thanks for watching. And I really hope that some part of this information has been useful for you. If so, please subscribe. Thank you.